diabetes, lowered sex drive, increased risk of injuries, mental slowness and weight gain. Um, there's an absolute correlation between insomnia or lack of sleep and um, midsection weight gain, BMI increases and heart disease. Um, I think the latest stats show that um, sleep of less than five hours and doubles your risk of heart attack. So what are the signs and symptoms of insomnia? You've got poor concentration and memory, poor performance of tasks, you've got headaches, irritability is a big one. <laughs> People just aren't as resilient, you know, you just can't quite handle the same amount of pressure coming from all directions when you haven't slept. I don't know about you, but I just feel frazzled if I haven't slept. It's like I just can't keep it together as well. You've got mood disorders, depression, anxiety and panic attacks. These aren't to be taken lightly. People literally develop serious mental health issues as a result of not sleeping. You've got anticipatory anxiety, which is the whole, you know, people start to worry that they're not going to get to sleep. So even though they might have slept, if they hadn't worried about it, they start to worry that they're not going to sleep. So then that sets up a stress response and then they don't sleep and round and round it goes. It's a vicious cycle. And of course, um, lack of sleep leads to less enjoyment in activities and social interactions. People stop going out. And increased likelihood of alcohol and other substance abuse because they just need to find ways to relax to try to get to sleep. And of course, daytime drowsiness goes without saying, doesn't it? Okay. So factors linked to insomnia, we've got stress. Stress is a no-brainer. We know that stress causes stress hormones. I'm going to talk to you a bit later about cortisol and what that does to the body. And cortisol is a stress hormone. Anxiety, depression and other neurological conditions. Menopause, the changing of the hormones and progesterone deficiency has a really big impact on women. As if menopause isn't nasty enough for some people, they also get insomnia and I just think that's mean. <laughs> Aging, people think that as they get older they just naturally need less sleep, um, that's just simply not true. As we age however, our ability to ab absorb nutrients, minerals and pro process proteins into amino acids which go to make other chemicals in the body definitely changes. We have a greater requirement for them, we may need to work on digestive potential in that person etc but certainly aging is no excuse for not sleeping. Um, caffeine, alcohol, recreational drugs and long-term sedative use and stimulants all um, can lead to insomnia in people. Shift work, travel across time zones and visual loss, all of those relate to that circadian rhythm that I was talking about earlier. Um, time zone traveling is particularly nasty and people that do shift work really, really difficult. I, I simply tell people to change their job. <laughs> Get a new job. <laughs> Get a nine to five job in one time zone. <laughs> Visual loss, of course, because of the um, um, melatonin secretion that we'll talk about later, because if the eyes aren't recognizing light, it won't release the sleep hormone. Certain medications, high fat diets, lack of exercise and food sensitivities. A little bit later I'll talk to you about what chemicals are naturally occurring in the body that are um, stimulatory and what are inhibitory and food sensitivities can set up histamine reactions and histamine is a stimulant. So um, that's where the food sensitivities or allergies comes into play. And blood sugar disorders also. Okay, so that's just a little reminder in case <laughs> any of you have forgotten what it's like to be strung out and really tired. <laughs> okay, so during stress our bodies rely on the adrenal glands which are little tiny glands that sit on top of our kidneys and these monitor our fight or flight response and during stress a hormone called cortisol is secreted. This is the normal um, daily cycle or circadian release, release of cortisol. And as you can see at 12 a.m. cortisol is supposed to be low, nice and low. And as we wake up, 
about six or seven o'clock, cortisol is really high because that's our wake up hormone. That's what we want our cortisol cycle to look like. Unfortunately, for some people who have got themselves into a really um, unhealthy stress response, you can find that they're spiking, cortisol spikes um, throughout the night. So one of the tests that um, Hope and I do, sorry, I forgot to introduce you, didn't I, Hope? Sorry, Hope Thomas, super naturopath. Um, what one of the tests we do is we can do a saliva test for people at 12 a.m. and again at 2 a.m and you just simply spit or collect your saliva in a little plastic tube and that measures whether you have cortisol at that time of the morning or not, um, which is really helpful. Okay, so a little bit more about circadian rhythms and cortisol. Cortisol is an anti-sleep hormone. Cortisol levels are naturally highest in the morning and then reduced throughout the day and they're lowest during sleep, right, in a perfect world. Um, <coughs> As cortisol levels rise, we're given the energy to begin our day, and cortisol levels are supposed to drop about three hours after dark, allowing our body to enter into a period of um, rest and recovery, physical repair and regeneration, commonly known as sleep. But cortisol isn't completely bad, it's not a baddie, it has some really important roles that it plays in our body. Um, it converts fats and proteins into energy, it keeps us alert, balances our electrolytes, um, calibrates heartbeat and pressure, and it counteracts inflammation. However, sustained high levels of cortisol can have detrimental effects on us. Why? Well, because compared with good sleepers, people with insomnia secrete more cortisol in the evening before bedtime and in the first half of their sleep. Um, they also have more fast brainwave activity in the non-rapid eye movement or non-REM sleep and both are indicators of arousal. Bottom line of all of that technical jargon is that they're not getting down into the deep restorative resting sleep. They're staying on the surface, bobbing around like, you know, with a snorkel on. Okay. Poor lady. The adrenal hormone cortisol has a direct relationship with insomnia. So then you get into the vicious stress insomnia cycle where you, you've got, you know, your insomnia has been triggered by something that's started by stress or worry or daily pressures and then you have difficulty falling asleep and you've developed a little bit of insomnia and some poor sleep quality and then you get um, fatigued and irritable and you get nervous tension and then you've so wound up from worry and stress and everything else that it just goes round and round and round. So here's a little bit more about how the brain works and how all the sleep hormones work. Neurotransmitters, which are what they're called. Neurotransmitters are the chemicals that relay messages between the nerve cells, which are called neurons. They're just chemicals that our nervous system and brain um, are managed with. Some neurotransmitters are inhibitory. In other words, they inhibit, they calm things down and others are stimulatory or excitatory. So they actually get the brain going. So here's that um, chart I was mentioning earlier, and you can see there on the left-hand side histamine, which I mentioned in relation to food allergies. You probably know about histamines because a lot of people take antihistamines for hay fever and things like that. It's released as part of an allergic response in the body and you can see it's stimulating. And that's why antihistamines that people take for hay fever and things, you know, make people drowsy because it's inhibiting that stimulatory chemical. And you can see down the bottom, oh, the, the, the top one's epinephrine and norepinephrine. That's just fancy names for adrenaline. Okay, and down the bottom there, you've got the excitatory hormone cortisol, which we've just talked about, the anti-sleep hormone. And on the nice, calming purple side, we've got serotonin and GABA, which are feel-good neurotransmitters, and most importantly, melatonin. So, here's a little bit more about melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that's produced by the pineal gland and is controlled by our circadian clock. 
it's known as the hormone of darkness or the sleep hormone. Its primary function is to get us into a deep phase of sleep so as to maintain our natural body time clock, which is the circadian rhythm. So when levels of melatonin are too low or there's an adequate melatonin throughout the night, a person is not able to achieve all those phases of sleep and their sleep quality is affected. Oh, this is just a whole lot of really tired, sad people. <laughs> so, how much sleep do we need? Well, we sleep for approximately one third of our lives, which means it's pretty important, right? And certainly most people agree that we need about seven to eight hours. A lot of people can get away with seven. Personally, I'm an eight to nine hour girl. If I wake up after seven hours, I don't feel as good as I wake up after eight. Without an alarm clock, I will naturally wake up after nine. <laughs> and if I go to 10, which I've been known to do, I wake up feeling tired. So there's definitely a balance and, and we do need to get to know what that is for ourselves. So are you suffering from sleep debt? Um, the sleep debt concept is kind of like a bank account in an overdraft. If we're not getting sleep, Night after night, we develop what is called sleep debt and we go into the minus category and we need to catch that up. There are some people that think we never get that back, um, but I don't believe that. I believe with the right application and taking care of the body and ensuring that we get the right phases of sleep and the right depth that we can actually come right back up and feel fantastic. Um, I put this in because I think it's quite... Um, quite appropriate for insomniacs. Insomnia is a gross feeder. It will nourish itself on any kind of thinking, including thinking about not thinking. You know, that whole busy mind syndrome that we've got going on. It's also um, referred to in um, the sleep circles as popcorn. You know, pop, pop, idea, pop. Another thought, another thought. Just trying to turn that brain off is um, a challenge for some people. Okay. So we know that sleep is the most important activity ever, right? Because we're at a sleep seminar, so we've got a bias here. Um, but what can we do to support good sleep? There are certain foods and drinks and nutrients and herbs which we can use to support our body to rebalance and get ourselves sleeping again. Um, after the seminar, you're most welcome to come up and we've got an information sheet with about 23 different um, practical and free common sense approaches to sleeping, information sheets that you can take home. Um, but we'll go over about um, 15 of them now, just quickly. So one, make sure you're tired. Do some exercise during the day, but never too close to bedtime, otherwise your heart rate will go up, and so will your adrenaline, and so will your cortisol. Um, and that way you'll be pumping rather than being relaxed when you go to bed. I did have a client recently um, who was doing three, about three hours of Thai kickboxing every night between 7 and 10.30, and then going home and trying to go to sleep, and he said that he would lie there and his heart would absolutely be pumping out of his chest and at one stage he was actually awake for 48 hours and he was doing this seven days a week so I said to him okay <laughs> let's cut back on the exercise to only one hour a night let's take that exercise back to between six and seven and we gave him you know the appropriate nutrients and things and you know his whole life changed so exercise is good like everything but within moderation and at the right time. Um, get up at a decent hour. If you're in bed by 11, you should be up by at the latest at eight o'clock. You know, don't try to oversleep to try to catch up from the day before if you missed out because otherwise that will upset that circadian rhythm. So do try to keep to an eight hour cycle, no matter what, while you're reprogramming your sleep cycles, okay? Um, mineral deficiencies also cause to sleep also cause sleep disturbances. Um, my favourite mineral is magnesium, which I'll introduce in a little while, and that calms the nervous system down, but mineral deficiencies definitely impact on health. Cortisol, we've gone on about that enough probably. I guess the uh, most important thing to realise is that if you wake up in the middle of the night um, and you turn the light on, you can actually 
turn off your melatonin secretion and you can um, get your cortisol going. So if you do wake in the night time, don't turn the lights on, okay? I mean, like have a nice little night light if you're worried about